It's Darcy Lacoube reporting live from CS 2023. I'm here with Tim O'Malley, who's the AVP of US Business for E-Ink. And today we're gonna to talk about the state of displays, E-Ink, and all the other good stuff that E-Ink is working on. So I'd like to, for you to take it away. We have some milestones to discuss in a collaboration with BMW. Sure. It's really cool looking. Thank you, Darcy. Yeah. It's great to be here. Uh, so we're having a great show. There's a lot happening at CES and we're glad to be part of it. That's great. Uh, we've Got the big announcement that happened at the keynote. Mm -hmm. uh, people saw the BMW car, the iX Flow, the D, yeah. that had a color changing surface all over it. Yeah. Uh, they made it look like the, the love bug, they made it match the patterns. It was very exciting. And Eek is thrilled that we had our color material working with BMW on that you, car. You were referencing some challenges uh, from an engineering perspective in terms of like the curve uh, aspect of the, the car. Yep. So, what sort of uh, challenges did Eek have to overcome? Uh, to make that possible for BMW to put on their car. Absolutely. These pe people like BMW, when they're designing a car, really care about the lines and the curves, obviously, to get that design feature. Um, and some of them are not the friendliest to uh, a flat material material that starts out flat. So as you bend it uh, through complex curves, especially on some of the lines, mm -hmm. we needed to build in ways to relieve the stress mm -hmm. and make all the electrical connections. So and there's a big team at BMW, uh, team at Inc. working together to figure all those things out. That's great. And how many colors is the display currently capable of producing now? Sure. So the car itself is mm -hmm. using 32 colors. 32. So it can switch between any of the 32 on any of the panels of the car. That's remarkable. The product that we're coming out first is using eight colors. So we kind of released a little bit more from the lab for the BMW car than is in the first product. But uh, you can see where it's going. Is there any uh, product within the Ink portfolio that you're particularly uh, attracted to or you have an affinity towards? There's quite a few. Um, we came out with our Gallery 3 product uh, last year and announced in December that there are seven companies picking that up. Wow. So that's bringing full color, thousands, okay. tens of thousands of colors to the e-reader platform. So we're really getting into that paper-like look now with uh, wow. full color there. Yeah. Um, we've brought saturated full color mm -hmm. to retail. Okay. So we've got black, white, red, yellow, orange going on there, and we're continuing to leverage more color in retail. That's fantastic. Um, I'm really thrilled by some of the wearables. Yeah. Uh, Fossil Hybrid Watch, yep. announced earlier this week. Uh, that's been a great platform. It again combines the fashion yeah. with the element of the design and the use kit of, of the ink display. They did a great job. That's great. Um, and also announced this week, there's the Lenovo. I'm not sure you've heard of that yeah. one, the Lenovo, with the screen that spins. Yes. So on one side is the ink display. They have an OLED display on the other side and a hinge that allows you to spin that so you can see put either one on the surface and when you close it yeah. as a functional top. And in terms of the, uh, can we just maybe get into the technicals in terms of like the energy usage and everything? Have has the company been able to make it uh, even more efficient over the last few years compared to the previous iteration? Yes, so the energy efficiency uh, has a lot to do with we're relatively low voltage, but also there's no power used when it's showing an image. So we use power to update, and then once that update is done, it's not drawing any power. And so a lot of the demos we carry around are full images, but we don't have any power cords with us. And so a lot of those use applications that we're a great fit for have sort of a lower use cycle. If you think of the retail store, Mm -hmm. updating your price. Yeah. It feels like they're updating a lot lately, I yeah, know. I know, I know. <laughs> but, uh, you know, maybe once or twice a day in the store, actually. Yeah. And so holding that image with no power is easily less than 1% of a traditional display, easily. And, and also from an environmental perspective, ESG and all that. Absolutely. You know, I mean, it's great to be able to be more power efficient. That is part of our DNA. Yeah. Um, the renewable energy displays are a key thing in the world right now. In yeah. Europe, they've passed laws in Germany and France limiting when displays can be used. So there are hours and hours per day yeah. that you can't use a traditional display uh, because of the energy concerns, um, especially yeah. for non-public information displays. Uh, so the world needs a low power display and uh, we're out there trying to make it happen. Yeah, absolutely. And in terms of um, anything on the transparent side, is there anything that you <laughs> talk about? Or is yes. there any innovations in that regard? So you know about the transparent side, huh? A bit. Excellent. <laughs> Uh, we have a product line, a technology line called Just Tint. And so that switches from transparent yeah. to mostly opaque, you know, mm -hmm. like 1% uh, transmission. And so we're continuing to advance that technology, trying to work with partners to bring it into, uh, we talked about using it for automotive sunroofs, yeah. 
Yeah. And so we had a, a little showcase of that in a booth last year. Um, and that, it's really exciting. Electric vehicles yeah. uh, can get really hot if you have that sunroof open. Mm -hmm. And when you turn the air conditioning on, you can't drive as far. That's true. I was just telling some of my colleagues, I know someone who didn't turn their air conditioning on because they didn't know if they were going to make it before they could charge at their destination. <laughs> it's a trade -off. And so we don't want to have those trade-offs. We want to enable the you know, full electrification of vehicles and the experience people want. Absolutely. And who would you say is Inc's largest competitor? Oh, it's a fun question. <laughs> um, so we generally say it's paper. Yeah. That's our usually our first thing. I like that. We're trying to bring additional functionality and largely in places where people use paper, yeah. where that's reading, where that's note taking. So e-notebooks has been a big category, smart city signage, uh, retail shelf tags, all of those started as paper applications. And so we know that in some devices, people are also choosing LCDs and OLEDs because those are the right for those applications. Mm -hmm. And in some cases, an ink display can be the right, especially for healthy eye choices. Yes. Um, but it's really paper that we think about. Uh, well, it's a formidable competitor. <laughs> it's been around a while. Yeah, it has. Yeah. Yes. I think since the Egyptian times. <laughs> exactly, papyrus. <laughs> so you've been with the company for 21 years, you were saying before. I joined in 2000, uh, wow. right before the dot-com crash, actually. It was February. Perfect timing. Perfect timing. I nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, and it, the company was founded in, out of, in 97 out of the Media Lab. Okay. Um, and then we were purchased by the Taiwan company PrimeView, which has changed its name to Ink Holdings. Uh, so from 2000 to 2007, when Amazon first came out with that Kindle, we were working hard on the technology. Yeah. And then we've been really expanding our application since then. But I've had uh, quite a few roles. It's been quite a ride. That's, that's fantastic to hear. And you were mentioning uh, tens and tens of millions of units. There's millions and millions of people who get to experience Ink every day. Yes. You know? um, I, to talk about that retail experience, you go to um, some of the retail stores where they have the shelf tags. Uh, Best Buy was one example. I wonder how many people know they're experiencing that, that interaction with an e-ink display because it looks just like printed page. And so there's way more interactions than I think people know about. And it's yeah. got to be tens of millions a day, that's, easily, that's incredible. maybe more. That's incredible. And so what do you see for the future? I mean, you know, if we can maybe look 10, 15, 20 years down the road. Do sure. Think, is it technically possible to continue to improve and add uh, more uh, you know, dimension to what it's uh, capable of producing? Absolutely. Wow. That, that, that Between the transparent films, which aren't even full products yet, to we're just starting our color journey, really. Yeah. Um, I, there was recently a quote I heard from Bill Gates. You know, What we do in t two years, we overestimate. But what we do in 10, we underestimate. Our tagline is on every smart surface and making the surfaces smarter and greener. And so we want to get to cars, we want to get to billboards, we want to get to, yeah. and that application of a low power, full color technology yeah. is something that the world, like I said before, needs right now. So we see tons of applications for it. We're going to continue to look at surfaces and continue to ask ourselves, how can we enable that? Just remarkable. And you know, for our audience and for more technically minded people out there, how is it possible that the ink display can still maintain to produce an image while using no power? That's a great question. That's definitely part of the secret sauce. Yeah. Um, so there, in each pixel of a display, let's say, so each location, there's multiple pigments. So in our color displays, mm. we have either red, orange, black, white pigments. They're physical pigment particles. Mm -hmm. And in the Gallery 3 displays, it's CMY, cyan, magenta, yellow, and white pigment particles. Okay. We apply voltage to move those effectively up and down so that the viewing surface has the pigments that give you the color you see. And then we engineer, let's call it the fluid, but it's a little more viscous, mm -hmm. so that when the power goes away, everything stays where it is. So it's at least more than enough to counteract gravity, for instance. Yeah. Um, but you could shake it, it won't, doesn't move. Um, so we're engineering not just the movement of those pigments, we're engineering the stability of the material around them yes. so that we can move through it when we want to yeah. and stay when we're not doing that. That sounds like quite an engineering challenge. I, 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 I've become a firm believer in never betting against the scientists. The things that we can do are just amazing. Yeah. Um, there was a Korean professor who had said, you'll never get to color because it can't happen. 
And then when he saw our Gallery 3 display showing full color with, with four different pigments, yeah. he said, I have to go update my course. <laughs> well, that's a good thing to overcome. Because it's amazing what the scientists can do. It's really great. And how many engineers and scientists are employed uh, by you? Uh, so we have 400 to 500 people employed in the U.S. Yeah. That's a mixture of some on the business side, a bunch of the innovation centers at uh, Bill Ricker and Fremont, right. at Massachusetts and California, nice. uh, and also a manufacturing facility. Yeah. Worldwide, we're close to about 2,500 people. Oh, wow. That includes the headquarter team in Taiwan, which is an R&D center and also a business center. It includes the assembly factory in China, and it includes those U.S. operations. So we're truly global. Yeah, that's, that's cool. A lot of companies need to be these days. Yeah, you have to in order yeah. to address all the opportunity and to be efficient in working in the places where it makes sense. So if there's anyone out there in the audience who might be thinking about wanting to work with you, are there any uh, career openings or there, are there any type of candidates that you like to, to work with in particular? Yeah, that, they should call me right now. I'm, I'm right available. Now. <laughs> okay, we'll put the number yes, up on the <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, yes, we do have a number of open positions on the website. We're yeah. looking for everything in manufacturing and science research and development and on the business side uh, we would be taking many there's a lot of things to go look at on the website physicists electrical engineers um, advanced chemistry yeah. uh, business development Very absolutely well. take a look so the companies continue to grow and get more success yep more products in the hands of i guess in terms of the customer profile so it really could be it's very uh, quite varied it's say. extremely varied. Yeah. We're an ingredient company in the sense that our product goes in as an ingredient to what other people are making. So whether that's e-readers or smart city signage or retail or wearable medical devices, mm -hmm. um, we show up in a lot of places and we're, we work to customize the attributes to all of those applications. That's fantastic. Well, is there anything else you'd like to add for the audience or anything uh, you're particularly excited about for the future? Uh, I'm very excited for the future of Inc. Yeah. I think that our frontier of the applications we're working on is as broad as it has ever been. We are leaning heavily into color. You'll see that in all of those applications. We're leaning heavily into sustainability, as we talked about low power, and heavily into healthy. Yeah. Using a display with less blue light and less power is good for you and good for the world. That's, wow. That's a great slogan. <laughs> and I, I, know, I know you believe it, right? I and absolutely do. Putting with the success the company's achieved and I'm really, really excited to see what other innovations come out of e in the future. Thank you very much, Darcy. It's Darcy Lacker Bay reporting live from CS 2023. I'm here with Tim O'Malley. Thank you very much for tuning in.